Back with us on the Sports Mag Zone, track and field enthusiasts are waiting patiently to see if the government will sanction the staging of the annual Boys and Girls Athletics Championships put on by the Intersecondary School Sports Association, ISA. The event, known globally as CHAMS, was tentatively set for April 27 to May 1. The ISA president, Keith Wellington, appeared on this show earlier this week to say ISA has submitted the requisite plan, complete with measures to conform with COVID-19 regulations. But as yet, there is no word from the government. Some people say the government should simply inform ISA that, like last year, it is unsafe to stage a CHAMS amid the pandemic. But yet others believe every effort must be made to give the high school stars a chance to shine. We are waiting to be joined by an important guest. For the moment, though, Lance, mm. this is the debate as it has been set up. Some people saying, look, just pull the plug from now and move on with other things. While others are saying, no, you should wait until the very last moment before you deny these boys and girls a chance to build on their academic and economic future, as the case may be. Yeah, you said with track and field fans waiting patiently, George, but a lot of them well, are impatient. waiting impatiently. Well, that's what I said. I said impatiently. <laughs> you I said did? Impatiently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting impatiently. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, it, you know, the, the fact is that even last year, when I think there was reasonably clear justification to not have the meet, there were a lot of people in the track and field fraternity in Jamaica who felt that it could be staged. So if they were saying so a year, a year ago, you know that they feel even more strongly now, having gone through a year of coping with the COVID-19 pandemic and the attendant issues uh, surrounding it, that um, they feel that, you know, something has to be done. We just saw, as we, we, we showed you, uh, the live corporate era meet, which uh, Sportsmax had broadcast a couple of weekends ago, um, that it was safely, safely held and safely um, executed by the organizers and the athletes um, got some good work in there so uh, there is a general feeling among the track and field fraternity that um, a display has been put there to show that um, the meet can be safely held however they aren't in charge of administrate ad administering um, you know guidelines from from you know f from the government and um, I guess we are on two different sides of the fence here where the the athletes and the track and field fraternity feel that it's safe to do so, but the government are apparently is still not convinced. You know, the, 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 one of the greatest things in life is self-interest. And one of the things most often misunderstood and not taken account of properly is self-interest. Because self-interest is at the heart of being a human being. It's at the heart of, being, of representing an organization and entity. It's at the heart of representing your own family because it is why, Lance, if there are scarce benefits and spoils available, you are going to want to ensure that those scarce benefits and spoils are being directed towards your family and not my family. And it has nothing to do with you not liking me. It's just the reality. I say that to say that where governments are concerned, a government has to look at a big picture. Track and field stakeholders have to look at the track and field big picture. The track and field big picture is not the same as the national big picture. And so, track and field big picture viewers will say, why is the government not green lighting us? We can stage it safely because we can do this, we can do that. But when the government looks at the bigger picture, that the track and field big picture falls into like a piece of a, of, of a cross, of a, a, a puzzle, then it has other considerations to factor, and that's why the decision can't be made. But anyway, joining us to discuss the issues, mm. Member of Parliament for South East Clarendon and the Minister of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change, Pernell Charles Jr. Welcome to the program, Minister. Good to have you. Thank you. Good. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, we are hearing you clearly. Are you hearing us? I'm hearing you, yes. Great. All right. Uh, talk to us now about this issue. We, 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 we've we've spoke about, spoken about a natural debate that is brewing. Some people saying the government, the government that you are a part of, should just pull the plug on champs from now, let ISA move on with other things. Other people are saying, let it remain the decision for as long as is possible before you say you are not greenlighting champs this year. In the context of the benefit of champs to the students involved, the guardians involved and parents, and the the development of these youngsters, where do you sit on having champs amid this pandemic this year? 
Well, I am in a very precarious position, George, Minister in Cabinet, um, who understands the full complement of challenges that we have that flow from the pandemic and the need for us as leaders to take bold uh, decisions, uh, which uh, we know we have detriment, uh, but decisions that focus on the welfare and particularly the health of our, of our nation. But from the perspective of me as a member of parliament, of a school like Vera Technica uh, where, and Bustamante, where we have several students who depend on CHAMS as a platform for them to be identified for scholarships. Um, and also just this as one of these centric, um, just you know, most important pillars of energy for the students to, to work towards. But I definitely want to find a balance where we can have you know, a conversation today because I was at Vera Technica with some of my brilliant champions who, if given an opportunity, I know well, were talking to the coach as well, eager to know exactly what the position is. Um, I spoke to Minister Grange. I know that we have, uh, there is great effort to see that we can have the, the, the event, but we also know that the, the primary consideration must be at this time the health of the nation and ensuring that we are not doing anything that is going to place the nation um, in you know a, in a detriment or in a position where we can spread Minister, are you still there? Right. Let me let me ask you this. You you give, given your proximity to the action, you've spoken to students, I'm sure, coaches, perhaps even the school principal at Veer Technical, the 21 times girl champions. What are they saying? Well, well, well we, I think we've lost the minister there. The connection was a bit dicey. But Lance, he mentioned Veer Technical, one of several high schools, one of several schools in his in his uh, constituency, Veer Technical, of course, 21 times champions of Girls' Champs, first winning it in 1967. So they have a lot to lose if champs can't go on. And as you heard him speak about the natural conflict lands between being a cabinet minister, looking at the bigger picture, but being an MP focused on self-interest for his constituency and his constituents, of which Veer Technical is a part, then the scale of the problem now becomes illuminated if someone like him is having this natural conflict within himself. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. You know what? He is as well one of the younger cabinet ministers, so I guess his ability to connect with the, with the young people is probably a little bit more stark than some of the others. Uh, but you are right about Veer Technical. No school in the history of uh, Jamaica's track and field has produced more Olympians than Veer Technical has. So he is close to the, the Clarendon unit and he understands how much they are depending on uh, the track and field championships to be staged. Of course, we know it was already cancelled last year and that significantly hurt a lot of uh, athletes in their late teens in particular who are trying to, you know, position themselves for scholarships and so on. So if it is a, if it's cancelled for a second year running, it will hurt even more. Minister, before we lost you there, we, we understand you're back on the phone. We were saying that we were asking, given your proximity to the athletes themselves, coaches, uh, principal, senior people at Veer Technical and other schools, what are they saying at this time about the possibility that they may not get the platform of champs for a second straight year? Well, I can tell you, they unequivocally want champs. <laughs> there's, no, there's no going around. They want us to find a way to put in place um, a, a, some mechanism or a solution that allows them to, to have champs, have the opportunity to be seen, have the opportunity to express um, their, their, the result of uh, all of the hard work that they've put in. Um, but they do appreciate. After all of that, they will say to you in the end, but we understand. We, we get the, the, the considerations, we get the concerns. So it, again, it is really for us as a country to step back and look on our circumstances and to say to, us, to ourselves, can we put in place some formula that creates that judicious balance where we can have our students engaging in this activity safely? For me, I'm a scientist, George, you know that. That's my core. Yes. Uh, study and so I go to empirical data. I go to the 
to the technicians and to the experts. And so I would be guided to ask the health experts if they believe that any of the students would be placed in a deleterious position if we allow them with protocols to, to engage in champs. If the answer is no, then I would give my full support to it. But, 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 but let me ask you this. But let me ask you this. Are your, are your cabinet colleagues seized, Minister, of, the, of this fact that a, the cancellation of champs for a second consecutive year could represent arrested development and some young girl, some young boy could have that scholarship opportunity pass them and not have that chance come again. And because of that reality, every effort needs to be made to give chan champs a chance of happening. Are they seized of that? Well, let me put it this way. Any cabinet that has Olivia Babzik range in it is fully seized of those issues because she is a champion and you know that. She is the epitome of um, advancement of sports. Uh, but the, the reality for us as a cabinet is that insofar as we all desire and would want to see champs, we also have that ultimate contemplation of the priorities of our country. And we have to look on it from a wider perspective, not just seeing it uh, for, for the benefit that is there for the students uh, in terms of, as I said, being magnified for scholarships and having the glory and the historic experience of just enjoying the atmosphere of champs. I understand. Believe me, I'm a Jamaican. We all want champs. It, but it, 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 this is one of the most difficult, George, this is one of the most difficult contemplations that any government will have to face. Yeah. in terms of curbing. We are in community phase now. Yeah. And that is why we have to see whether or not it is best for us to slow down on it or to go forward. So, Minister, you, 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 you know that ISA has several competitions. So not just champs. We're talking about Lance netball, football, the other competitions that ISA has. Is it that Cabinet is making a, a, a decision, well, will make a decision on champs and all ISA, all of the other sports, or is it that champs, given that they've made a submission, that that's the only thing they're considering right now? I, I couldn't speak to that um, in particular detail. But I do know, and Minister Grange, I'm sure, will then will, 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 will sit it with the capacity to respond to that kind of question, that champs is a, is a particularly... Um, you know, unique event. Yes. It, it, it's not just a, champs is not a, just a sporting event. Let's get it right. Yes. Champs is, 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 is the kind of event that has become a part of our cultural understanding and identity as Jamaican. Okay? Yes. So, so this is a very important scenario. You're, you're treating with um, an event that some youngsters for their lifetime have been working towards. And so I, as I said, from my perspective, as somebody who's a lover of sports, as somebody who understands the issues, as a member of parliament for one of the schools that um, has, you know, through history, produced some of the champions, I understand the impact. But I also, from where I sit, as a cabinet minister, um, with the prime minister, have the responsibility to protect our country. Yeah, that is a difficult decision, but we have to make one. F final one: Do 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 you are you uh, do you have uh, enough a sense, Minister, of when a decision will be made? Either way, w must we wait another four weeks, another six weeks before that determination is made? What what are you I'm, picking up? I'm going to give you a very general response because I, I would prefer to leave the specific to my cabinet colleague. Um, but I think that you'll see a decision in, in not just short order, but very short order. Mm. Mm. MP speak, cabinet speak. All right, thank you very much for your time, Minister. <laughs> All the best to you. Thank you. All the best to you both. Good, good, yeah. good. Lance, you did play some football with the minister in Barbados when he was studying law, didn't you? Yes, yes. The the Jamaica team and the Jasak comp in the Jasak team for the competition. It was a CARICOM tournament every February. Was he any good? He was okay. <laughs> We take a break, but it's <laughs> <laughs>